Nowadays, nearly everyone has a smartphone and it's an integral part of people's daily lives. If you want to use your phone to make your life easier, then stick around because in this video, we're going to go through an application called Tasker, which will show you how to automate things using your phone. So the first thing you'll need to do, of course, is go to the Google Play Store and download the app called Tasker. It does cost a few dollars, but I think you'll find that by the end of this video, it's worth those few dollars investment. Once you've installed the Tasker application, open it up. When you open Tasker for the first time, you'll see something like this. It will show you that there's no profiles, no tasks, no scenes and no variables. When you open Tasker and when you use it, you'll find that it often asks for permissions for things for the first time. That's because it needs permission to run a lot of these operations. So things like access to your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, your location, and certain accessibility features. There are some things that you can do in Tasker that are a bit more complicated, but some of them need you to either have root access to your phone or enable something using ADB, which is a bit more complicated. So we're going to stick to some more simple automations in this video, but they're still quite powerful. Right, let's go through the menus and show you what each bit means. So you've got profiles, tasks, scenes and variables. And then at the bottom, you've also got projects. So you can see here, if I click on home, I've got my projects here and I've created a new project here so that we can see what we're doing. Profiles are effectively automations. So you have trigger events and then you have tasks that get run when that event occurs. So let's create our first profile and see what I mean. Click the plus icon. You can see here that there's various triggers for a profile. So basically one of these things can happen which will activate the profile and then run the task. So the top one is application. So you can basically select when an application opens that something happens. The next one is day. So when it's a certain day of the year, then it can activate a profile. Event is an event on a phone. So various things that happen, which we'll go into more detail shortly. Location, so if you're in a certain location, then a profile can get activated. And state, which is similar to event, but a phone can be in a certain state for a longer period than when an event occurs. You'll see what I mean by that later as well. And then time, so certain times of the day when something activates. The first example we're going to go through is something fairly simple, but I use it most days. So what's going to happen is, is when you put your phone on charge, it's going to turn the torch off on your phone. I use this at night time when the missus has gone to bed and I haven't gone to bed yet. So I turn the torch on on my phone and then when I go into the bedroom and put it on charge, it automatically turns off again after a few seconds. So for this automation, we're going to click on state. We're then going to click on power and then click on power again. Now we can select which charging source activates this profile. So it doesn't have to be when you just charge it by any means. So you can select AC, USB or wireless. For me, I've got a wireless charger by the side of my bed. So I select wireless. And then when you exit out of that, you can see that it wants to create a task for you. So if we click on new task, and then we can name that task down the bottom here. Make sure you press the tick button rather than the plus above it. Okay, so now we're at the task section where you can add one or multiple tasks based on when this profile activates. So let's press the plus. In this section, you can see that it's actually got a filter which can be really useful. So let's try and search for torch. And there we go. And then we can say set to off, on or toggle. In this instance, we want it to be off. So now let's press back and there we go. We've created the profile. So basically when the phone starts to charge wirelessly, it will activate this task called turn off the torch, which will turn off the torch on the phone. So the next automation we're going to go through is show a big pop up on the screen when your battery gets low. This is because your phone can do this anyway, but it's normally at quite a low percentage and you might not want it to go that low, especially if you're going out. 
Also, you don't always look at the top of your phone to see what percentage charge your phone's actually at. So I find this quite useful to make sure that I don't go too low on my battery to preserve its life as well. Let's press the plus icon to create another profile. And we're going to go to state again. We're also going to go to power again. But this time we're going to select battery level. Here you can select what battery level you want this profile to activate on. So in this instance, I'm going to select from 10% to 30%. Now let's press the back button. Let's create a new task again. Let's name it. It's now showing the menu again where you can add your tasks, so let's press the plus. So what we want to do here is have some form of notification. There's quite a few different types, so let's press alert. And then you can see there's notify, there's a beep, there's a flash, there's a menu, there's a pop-up. We're going to select a pop-up. So let's call it something. And then in the text, you can specify the battery level, or you can just have a generic message. Let's just do a generic message to start off with and press back. And then we can see what it looks like by pressing the play icon in the bottom left. There we go. Now let's go back into it. Let's press here. And now if we press this button here, you can see that it's got a list of attributes, variables that you can use. So if we type in BATT, you can see it's got battery level. And then in here it puts percentage BAT, which is the variable for that. And then afterwards, we can put another percent sign. Let's go back again, press play. And there we go. Now we've proven that the task works, we need to prove that the profile works. So let's go back. And instead of it being 10% to 30%, let's set it higher so that we can see if it activates successfully. And there you go, you can see the profile is activated straight away. You can see that it shows this profile in green. That means that this profile is currently active because the battery percentage is still between these two values. As soon as it isn't, then it won't be green. So if I click in here, press this and reduce that and go back, you'll see that it's no longer green. This automation is similar to the last one. When your battery is low, we're going to get it to do something, but this time we're going to get it to send a text message to someone. This is so that if it's really low, they know that your battery's low and they can either ring you to make sure you're okay or to let you know that you need to charge it. My partner certainly likes to keep an eye on me, so this one can be as useful for them as it is for you. Let's press the plus again to create a new profile. Let's go to state power and battery level again. This time we're going to select a really low state. So between zero and 10, press back and then it'll get us to create a new task. Press the tick. Okay, so now what we need to do is get it to send an SMS when our battery is low. So let's press the plus again. If you type in SMS, you'll see that it displays send SMS, compose SMS, and a couple of other options. In this instance, we actually want it to send the SMS, so let's press that. And now you type in the phone number that you want it to be sent to and the message. You can also select which SIM card if you've got more than one SIM card, which is quite cool. Right, let's type in a dummy number. Let's type in a message and then press back and that's all you'd need to do. So we've got send SMS if the battery level is between zero and 10. And what will happen there is, is it will only send it 
when it goes within that range. So basically, as soon as the battery hits 10%, this profile would activate and then the SMS would be sent. Okay, let's go back into this. SMS battery low, back into this task. And you can see here that you can do the same as you can with all the other things, and that is that you can use variables. So if we press this, we could put in what the battery level is, which would probably be a bit more useful. So we can say, here we go. So here's an example where it sends the message how Mark's battery is at, and then it will put the percentage that the battery is actually at so that the person can call you and make sure you're okay. It's worth noting that this works when your phone is locked as well, which is great. There are some things in Tasker that need your phone to be unlocked to work, but most things do work when your phone's locked. Tasker does allow you to actually send a WhatsApp message instead, but the problem with that is, is you need to have your phone unlocked for that to work, so it's not really a viable option for this. For you Home Assistant users out there, this one could be quite exciting. I'm going to show you how to use Tasker to interact with Home Assistant using the Home Assistant API. I'm going to show you how to get the state of an entity and then use that to trigger an automation on your phone. In my example, what I do is, is I have a toggle in Home Assistant to see whether I'm working from home or not that day, and then that determines whether my alarm goes off or not. So let's take a look. For this automation to work, we're going to need to install a plugin for Tasker. So if we go to the Play Store and then we search for Auto Notification, it's a plugin for Tasker that you can then use within Tasker. Once it's installed, let's go back to Tasker. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a long lived access token in Home Assistant. For this to work, you're also going to need to have Home Assistant available over the internet. So you need to have a URL that's accessible from the internet for your Home Assistant instance. So once you have that, then you'll be able to use Tasker to interact with it. If you don't have that, you can still use it, but you will only be able to use it when you're inside your own Wi-Fi network. Right, so in Home Assistant, let's go down to the bottom and profile and then scroll all the way to the bottom. You will see a section here called long lived access tokens. So let's create a token. Once you've entered a name and pressed enter, then it will give you the token straight away. We can then use this within Tasker. I've already created an example in Tasker. So let's have a look in that one first before we create our own. So it might look quite complicated at first, but it's just broken down into a few steps to make it easier. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a variable in Tasker that includes the long lived access token that you just created. So let's click into this step. So variable set is the Tasker action. The name of the variable is percentage bearer, and we're going to set it to the long lived token. Let's now go back. And then in the next step, we're going to create another variable for the URL of your Home Assistant instance. So here you can see I've called this API URL and then I've put the URL of my Home Assistant instance. In this scenario, what I've done is I'm accessing the state part of the API. You could of course access other areas of the API as well to do other things. And then the next step is to actually make a request to Home Assistant. So you do a HTTP request and let's press into that and see what it looks like. So it gives you some information here about the variables that it outputs. So basically the response message. Let's scroll down. So you can see here we're doing a get method and then the URL shows the URL from the variable and then we do forward slash and then the name of the entity from Home Assistant. In the headers, what we need to do is we need to set the authorization. So that's basically the long lived access token. So this authorization section here is for that. And then content type is just so that it knows that it's JSON. 
So that's actually it. So that will call the API and then it will return the data into a variable and then we can use that information to do what we want. So if you look at the next step, we can see that that's been grayed out. So if you long press on something, then you can actually enable or disable that step by pressing the power icon in the top right. So you can see that this one is disabled at the moment. So let's go into this next step. So here we need to use the JavaScript script lit and we need to type in a tiny little bit of code. Basically what it does is, is it gets the state out of the message that's been returned from Home Assistant and then stores that into a variable called state. So it's basically passing the JSON message and finding the state attribute within it and then storing it in a variable called state for tasker. Okay, so once we have that, then we can do something with that state and decide if what we're going to do in tasker or on your phone. So I've now created an if statement to say, if the state variable equals on, then do something else, do something else. So in my example, I'm saying that if the state is on for Mark at home, then I want to dismiss my early alarm. So if you look here, you can see that it's performing another task within Tasker called dismiss alarm. So let's press into this quickly and you can see name. And if we search here, it shows all of the tasks within Tasker. So let's go to dismiss alarm here. So this is where you need the auto notification that we installed previously. So basically these steps will interact with that plugin. Let's click into the first one and you can see that auto notification query is the thing that we added in Tasker. This might look a bit confusing, but it's not too bad. So if you look here, you can see that it's showing notification app is clock. The title is turn off your upcoming alarm and it's looking for the text subscribe. So basically any notifications that come in from your phone that are from the clock app, it will pick up in Tasker. It will then say, what is the title of that notification? And then it will check what the text is for that notification as well. So on Android, or on Samsung at least, when your alarm's about to go off, a notification will pop up. So you can take advantage of that to then dismiss it from within the notification. So let's press the pencil here. Okay, so there's a lot of options, but if we press title, you can see that it's got turn off your upcoming alarm. And then if we press text, you can see that it's got subscribe. So that's the name of the alarm that I've named in my phone. And if you scroll down, you can see that you can also use regular expressions so that you can search for text and titles that are not exact. So let's now go back. So now that we've queried the notification, it will save some information into variables. So what we're interested in is the notification that's got a button on it for the dismiss. So let's go back and then go to the next step. So the next step is an if statement. And what we're saying is, is if this variable is set called an button one action, then do something. So what that's doing is it's checking the notification to see if there is a dismiss button. So if we go back into the top one again, you will see here an button one action, and that relates to the first button in a notification. So if that exists, then we need to do an auto notification action. So let's click into that. Okay, so this looks a bit confusing again, but let's click the pencil and see what's going on. So here, the option we're actually going to use is advanced. So let's press advanced and then intercept action ID. So it tells you what it does here really. It basically takes the action ID from the notification and then we'll press it. So here we're saying we want to press this action ID, which we got from the previous step. So to summarize, you call the Home Assistant API to check the state of an entity. So whether you're working at home or not. And then once you've got that information, you decide whether you want to try and dismiss an alarm or not. So the way you do that is you look at the notification that comes up on an alarm before it's about to go off. 
and then you press the dismiss button by using Tasker. Now let's create a new task so that you can see how you'd create it from scratch. So if we scroll down to variables, you can see that there's lots of options and we want to set a variable. So let's press variable set and then you'll see that it's what we saw in the example before. So then you can type in the name of your variables you want to use. In our case, it's the API URL and it's the long live access token. So the other thing we did was a HTTP request. So let's have a look for that. Great thing is, is you can just search in here. So HTTP request gives you some warnings, fine. And then it shows you the output variables. And then it shows you the information we saw earlier. So the method, whether it's a get or a post, etc. The URL, which you would, well, you could type in yourself here, but I recommend using a variable. And then the headers, which will include the long lived access token. And then query parameters. In this case, we don't use any. And then one of the other tasks that we used was a Java scriptlet. Here we go, by searching you can see JavaScriptlet. I'm just going to paste the code in here that I've got on the clipboard. I'll leave this in the comments, of course. And that's it. There's lots of things you could do with this. You could access any entities from Home Assistant and do something on your phone with them. You could also get adventurous and update entities in Home Assistant as well. Hopefully this video has helped you think of ways that you can use your phone to make your life a bit easier. If you think of great ways to use Tasker, then please leave them in the comments down below and consider subscribing and liking the video whilst you're there. Well, that's it for today. So thanks until next time.